My name is Jeanette and I was one of the young people that received one of the Crafty Kids boxes. Um, the Crafty Kids box made me feel more connected to the arts by drawing. It also helped me to keep my mind active during lockdown um, and try and use arts as um, a distraction instead of um, feeling sad and depressed. Um, I would like to just say a big thank you to everyone at RLP who put together the boxes um, and I still to this day use my Crafty Kids box um, whenever I'm feeling low or in a dark place I use art to distract my mind so thank you Like everyone else, we were functioning like a normal organisation. We do a lot of training, a lot of public speaking, a lot of classroom-based stuff. Mid-March, our diary really started to change and a lot of the work that was in it began to disappear. And when official lockdown was announced, we packed up and took operations um, home and remotely started working remotely. I think I panicked in the first week or so of lockdown. But I think that's a dead normal response. Lots of people responded that way. Then something happened that really changed uh, that panic and turned it into pure energy. I call it our trauma response. And I've been engaged with my RLP for under a year. And right now, what I do with RLP is I manage the Crafty Kids project. My name's Matthew. I've been with RLP just about seven months, production line assistant and step in supervisor for the Crafty Kids project. My name is Julie and I've been a volunteer for the Crafty Kids for about five months now. I worked as a delivery driver for the Crafty Kids initiative. I'm Jamie, I'm Fialwa, and I'm part of RLP. I am a production line assistant for the boxes. Hi, I'm Melanie, HR and operations side of RLP. I'm also the Violence Against Women coordinator for CLAX. I'm Lorna, I am a volunteer for RLP and I only started about a month ago. I was made redundant back in March and was looking for something to do and I was just lucky enough to come across the opportunity that RLP had as a social media assistant. Matt and I are engaged, they've been married. We've been together for you. So just How long have we been together? Four years. And uh, just checking. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> 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 um, so before lockdown, uh, I was engaging in the Hard Edges project. I had done, I think it was two workshops. The Craft Kids project came up, and uh, the first thing Jamie done was fling a box at me and say, "Can you build that?" And I went, well, "I'll try." And built it, and then that was sort of me. A lot of children didn't have access to computers and tablets at the start of lockdown, so we were able to give them something physical that they could do. It's kept kids occupied during lockdown because you know what kids are like, they'll annoy their parents and all that kind of stuff, but it really gives them something to do and well, the way I see it, craft stuff's art, so they've got that art stuff as part of like, their education school as well, so we can do it again. So I've been on furlough uh, for five months, so getting involved in a project where I could be part of a team was something that was really great. 
it really gave me a sense of fulfillment. Having a purpose during lockdown has been really great for me to get out and do something and be part of a team. It was, it was really great. And to do it with somebody that I, that is a friend is, is really great as well. It came from knowing that not everyone in the area would have access to readily available craft materials or actually possibly be in a physical position to run out and get craft materials. As shops were closing down, shelves were empty. And so we had a, a small idea. I spoke to the team about it and it, and it grew into something much bigger. Once we got the craft boxes up and running, we were sitting thinking about the girls who were used to getting things like sanitary towels and tampons from their school or community centres, all of which were then closed. And it was like, well, how do they then get them? So the idea for the self-care boxes came about at that point. We would make up boxes specifically around those products to get them to the girls but we also wanted to look after their mental health so we put in puzzle books and a journal with some toiletries all things that a teenage girl would be looking for. Down, I struggled really bad. Um, I struggled with my mental health. I was used to going to recovery cafes six to seven days a week and when lockdown hit I had nothing. I had absolutely nothing to engage in. When the Crafty Kids project was mentioned I was really keen to be involved and it involved working remotely from home and I didn't realise how much of an impact that would have living in a one bedroom house and having Matt move in with me as my carer to, to kind of help me control my emotions and my behaviours and things during this really difficult time. So you really didn't have a choice. No, I really know. didn't. It was, it was at the same time, it. right at the start of lockdown, I wasn't able to see my son at all. So that was about five months of no seeing him. I had to put my mind somewhere. So that's why I just jumped right in and helped Jamie when all the stuff was put into the house. So it started with a Zoom group call where ideas were flung around the how we could help a local community in Clipman and Shire. People who didn't have access to craft supplies, people living in poverty who were used to their children being at school five days a week and how they were going to entertain all these children who were now in lockdown and not allowed to go out and play and not allowed to go to school. And then within a week we can introduce you to this age mm -hmm. and you seemed really keen. Being a dad that sort of put it into perspective like there's probably, I don't know, there's thousands, millions of people that don't have access to anything. Um, so it was a, a great thing to be a part of and put my head down and just started getting straight to work. I'm Roxanne McGowan and this is Resilience Learning Partnership. We are making boxes through Covid. It started with kids boxes, just going out to families who basically can't afford things for their children through lockdown. They can't afford Xboxes, tablets, phones. Sometimes they've only got one phone in the household, which doesn't go through if you have a couple of kids. We also do self-care boxes, which go to people who have been through some sort of trauma, people who are coming out of jail, going into refuge with children who are just absolutely nothing at all. The art boxes, they consist of like paper, glow sticks, um, some googly eyes, some little scratch cards, some stencils, pens, pencils, jumbo crayons. And for the older ones, we just kind of change it up from like the stencils to friendship bracelets and stuff like that, stuff that you can actually make. So the self-care ones, they basically have, for the females and the male, are just basically the same. They have razors, shower gel, shaving foam, toothbrush, toothpaste, body wash, shampoo, conditioner, lip balm, just all the basic things that people are going to need. At the Zowens Learning Partnership, we try to get a point across about trauma. We usually work like in conferences with the police and like the healthcare sector, social work, people like that. But at the start of COVID, Shamila came up with this idea and it's just took, took off the ground. This is our brand new place that we just got a week ago. So we're just kind of trying to sort it all out, <laughs> figure where everything goes. Because this will be our permanent base now until January. 
So yeah, just trying to get it sorted, looking good, so we can get a little production line going, get more boxes out, get helping people. Yeah, that's it. Well, my name's Karen Newbegin, and I'm a community learning and development worker with Club Manager Council. Obviously, we were on a bit of a shock. Folk didn't really care what to do. They, did, they weren't focused on anything. They were living in a state of fear and high anxiety. And I was the same. I was living with that fear as well. But I wanted to focus and get involved in something locally that I felt would benefit the community, being a community worker. I knew that Shamila and, and the rest of the team were needing a hand to deliver the boxes. So I initially got involved in it because I was helping deliver boxes. But then I started to think about, what about older? And we, we started to think about survival boxes. Maybe it doesn't sound a lot to some people, but there was a lot of great things come for these delivering these boxes. You were going to somebody's door, everybody was like, wow, we're not letting anybody in. But it was really good getting to the doors, putting the boxes down, standing back, and that let you start having a conversation with the families. And as a result of that, we went on to deliver food parcels, mere arts and craft boxes, cooking food every week, we found out a lot of things about families that we maybe didn't ken because we were the only people that were going to see them on a weekly basis or a fortnightly basis, whatever it was. And the box was a tool, not just to keep them amused, but it was a tool for us and members of staff to actually speak to them and have a conversation with them and have a reason to go to their door and chap it. And to me, that meant an awful lot to people and let them keep in contact with everybody. Here in Cluckmanninshire, we have a very active and close-knit Breathe Easy group. I cannot express how much my members appreciated and valued the surprise of the wellbeing boxes your organisation so kindly donated. In these upsetting times, when days of isolation turn into weeks and then months, the goodwill of others is so heartwarming it reminds us that we are not forgotten. On behalf of my members of Breathe Easy Cluckman and Shire, I cannot thank you enough for bringing some joy into what can be a lonely and worrisome time. Many thanks, Linda. Would you like to see the boxes stay in production after lockdown finishes? Aye, definitely. And the fact that I enjoy working with RLP as well, so it's given me that motivation to actually go out and work, and plus I'm learning new things as you make them. So I, I would like to see them continue. When we first came up with the idea for Crafty Kids, it, it was solely going to be in Click Manninshire, and it's grew arms and legs, and it's been out to all different communities within Scotland, and I would hate for it to stop. There's so many organisations that could benefit from for craft and self-care boxes and so many children and young people and people um, leaving prison, people with mental health issues. I realise now, seven months down the line, that, that a lot of people can benefit from what's in these, these boxes. I definitely want to see them keep going. Um, just because of how many we've made, there's clearly a demand for them or a want for them. I think it should keep going, regardless, because um, it has helped a lot of people. I think we've shown that there's a definite need for them and I don't think the need would disappear with the end of lockdown. The need was there before. Poverty existed long before there was Covid and sadly it'll exist long after. So yeah, it's something that there is a real need for. I would certainly like to see the boxes stay in production after lockdown and I'm doing everything in my power to make sure that happens. As a take. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
the road ahead it twists and turns and the sun beats down and it burns but i keep keep on pushing through and every step quicker than the last my feet tread down this beaten path and i keep keep on pushing through Cause I get up And I may fall right back down But your love lifts me back to solid ground Yeah, I get up Yes, yeah, so 